All right. He finally dragged me to the movies again. He kind of has to, because otherwise I keep working. Or, in this case, I was playing Saints Row 4, which I guess technically is work. I was getting some footage. Anyway. Um, yeah, we saw The World's End. Uh, don't have a lot to say about this one. Um, I'm a huge fan of the kind of Simon Pegg movies. Did he, was he kind of one of the guys who produced this, you know, um... He wrote it. He wrote it. I saw. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually a huge fan of his movies, uh, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz. I, actually, I think, I, I have said, and I actually believe that Hot Fuzz, from like a, a, a screenwriting point of view, is like one of the, like one of the best written screenplays ever written. Like, in, I'm sure people will disagree with me. I, I mean, it's all subjective, but like, Hot Fuzz is seriously like, there is not a wasted line in that movie. Everything, that screenplay is so tight. It's perfect. That's like a perfect screenplay. The humor may not be for you, but like, perfect. Um, the World's End is, is not very good. I liked it. Uh, it's kind of strange that for the for the first two, it was a little slow for me to get into them. For uh, Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz, the first time watching it, I was like, it was good. Mm. But it t took time for me to grow, and, and yeah, now I I think they're great movies. Mm. It, it's, it's strange, and I can't really explain it, why it took a while for me to really get all the humor... I, I I don't see that. I, I liked both immensely the first time. Hot Fuzz actually benefits greatly from a second viewing. Uh, but I liked them both a lot the first time. But yeah. Um, this was probably the first one that I came in, and I really liked it the first go-around. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I this one left me really cold. Really cold. And... It, again, I know people are going to jump on me about this one, considering it's a movie about people doing a pub crawl and suddenly running into basically an invasion of the body snatchers scenario. But um, this movie was ridiculous. Like, it really, like, at any point these characters could have just gotten in a car and laughed. And they, they, even, rate, they even bring up the point and they're like, no, we can't. Why? We can't. And they just keep running to the next bar. And I'm like, wait, no. And they're like, well, like, no, we can't. We have to pretend like we don't know that they know. And like, I'm like, you guys are so full of shit. Like, and I go, okay, okay. There's, there's a point where you're like, well, this is, this is a comedy basically. And okay. I like, th there's no movie if they don't hang around. Fine, 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 fine. But it reaches a point that no human being, even in a comedy, like, these guys are just at every bit as alien as the aliens they're fighting. Like, no human being, even as crazy as the character Simon Pegg is playing, would act this way, like, at all. Like, these guys are in mortal danger, and even in a comedy, nobody is this sad, pathetic, and suicidal. Like, nobody. Um, I couldn't get into it. Well, it... it I don't think we're we're conforming with reality on Hot Fuzz either. I mean, we're, we're they're all exaggerated characters going through crazy situations. There's there's exaggerated, and then there's ludicrous. You know, like Hot Fuzz was a parody of action movie tropes. This wasn't. You know, this wasn't really a parody of anything. If this, if anything, this was a parody of a pro wrestling match. You know. Right? Oh, I love those scenes. <laughs> well, no, those were the only scenes that were worth watching, because it was just, like, immediately, immediately that was, like, you knew what kind of movie you were in for, like, because the first thing that happens when when they start realizing that they're fighting robots is that Simon Pegg throws a rock bottom. Like, I'm like, what? And then, and then... <laughs> And then Nick Frost, like, hits the people's elbow on another one, and I'm like, okay, that was awesome, but this has, this is just stupid. If I, if I might do some psychoanalyzing, Please. because that's what I'm doing. Please do. I think what makes Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz better, at least for you sure. or for me, yeah. is while they're 
both, they all have the loose theme of kind of man-children and people who can't grow up. Oh. Uh, they, they have a better, uh, they connect more to nerd audiences, I guess I'll say, and okay. that the Shaun of the Dead is a send-up of zombie movies, mm -hmm. obviously, and Hot Fuzz is a, is a mockery of action cop movies, mm -hmm. so you can get into them a lot better just because of the references mm -hmm. and the send-up of the genre, whereas The World's End, it's a buddy movie, it's a, it's a road, uh, kind of a road movie in that they're doing a mile-long pub crawl, but oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's that and it's a drinking movie, but there's not, there's not that other thing to tie into it. it you have the, the robots, but you're not really mocking sci-fi it's it's not a parody of anything. It's not. It's, it's not a satire of anything. And it's just a straight up comedy about people drinking. Yeah, and it, it's it's just and there and there's not enough action really to hold my interest. There were a few really good action scenes, but aside from the brawl in the bathroom, I really didn't find all that much to to hold my interest. Um, really, that was the best scene in the movie by far. There were several fight scenes. There were several fight scenes, but there wasn't enough really good action to 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 grip me. You know what I mean? Um, in fact, I can't really remember aside from that one fight with the twins. But she had the the feet on her. Arm. I was like, eh. um, it just yeah, it really. It the 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 humor in in the other two movies was, believe it or not, really way more intellectual. Um, whereas this was just kind of slapstick. It, it was slapstick, um, and it just really didn't engage me nearly as much. It, it was like, it really was like this movie wasn't trying. You know, it was just, it was just them slapping the shit out of each other for a while. And it's okay for that. Um, and actually I like a good bar fight movie, and there's not many of them. Um, the best bar fight movie ever made was from Duck to from dusk till dawn, which is literally like the last hour of that. It starts off as one movie, and then the last hour of it is one long bar fight, which is awesome. Um, this movie would have probably been way better had they just engaged in one long... If this had been like a siege movie, if, if they'd been stuck in one bar and made it like one siege movie, I, this is kind of like... I think they kind of got inspired by the scene where they're in the Winchester and like, let's make a movie where they go from bar to bar to bar and like, do that. I don't know. Um, I think this movie, <clears throat> for me, it's it was kind of amazing because uh, I think Simon Pegg did a, an awesome in a in a role reversal because he yeah. plays a character that's really a prick and yeah. that anyone else or not many people who could play it would come off as still being sympathetic, it mm -hmm. would drive people out of the theater, but he rides that line to where he's still a goofball, but mm. everyone knows he's a fucking idiot and, yeah. and doesn't it, it doesn't drive away the audience. And I think it's 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 kind of taken for granted comedy performances, but I think it was really one of the stronger acting performances yeah. I've seen. That that was <clears throat> the one strength I think and they I they do this on purpose is they they intentionally try to cast themselves, write themselves as way different characters than they used to be. For instance, in Shaun of the Dead, he's kind of a, he's kind of, the whole point of Shaun of the Dead is basically sleeping through his life like a zombie. Um, whereas, you know, kind of a slacker sleeping through his life, whereas in Hot Fuzz, he's completely straight-laced, perfect, athletic, super cop type of character. And in this one, he's, you know, he's the he's still mired in the 80s, still thinks he's the rebel, rebel, Billy Idol man-child, you know. He's, so, yeah, and, and likewise, Nick Frost has gone from bumbling idiot to corporate wage slave and stuff like that. So they, they do take great pains to make themselves very chameleonic in, in every one of these roles. You're right. And the character is very sympathetic to the point where, at the end, they do try to justify why he's such a fucking idiot by the end. It still doesn't work. I'm like, okay, you're trying. I don't buy it, but nice try. I was like, um, I, I did like the ending where the 
well, I don't want to spoil too much of the ending, but I thought the ending did go on way too long. It was very talky. I, I thought the ending could have been cut by, like, a couple minutes. Um, it was too talky. I thought maybe it could have used an action beat at the end. Um, it was very Bruce box like there in yeah. Babylon 5. Get the hell out of our galaxy! <laughs> um, it, it it actually kind of lost something, given the fact that the characters are so fucking hammered that they're incapable of coherent speech. Um, it it had its charm in that way, but they're like they're they're they were incapable of more than one syllable words. They're like get the fuck out of here. Um, it needed kind of an action beat or something like that. Um, it was too talky by the end. Um, it's yeah. Um, you know, and actually speaking about the comedy, I think. See, it, this kind of seems like, because uh, uh, Simon Pegg and, and was it... Uh, uh, Nick, Nick Frost. Nick Frost. They wrote Paul. Yeah. The, uh, stoner comedy about the alien. I didn't see that. It's it's good. It's not up to the level of Edgar Wright movies, but it's it's still very funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Edgar Wright, yeah. I, I think the... I think there was a change, though, because in Paul, it was also very reference-laden. Mm. It was very much a, a, a satire-slash-love letter of, of sci-fi, because you had a bunch of X-Files, you had you had Sigourney Weaver pop up and do her shtick from, from Aliens, you know, kind of the wink to the audience, and this one, it kind of plays off more... I would kind of say, kind of like... Uh, Red Dwarf, where it's not it's not referencing anything, but it's just about a bunch of quirky losers kind of getting into mixed up situations. Yeah. Because the, the, the interplay between them, they're not giving references, references, references. Yeah. It's all about, they're, they're kind of giving these wordplay exchanges, you know. And I didn't, those didn't really engage me either. There was a few who were like, I'm lost, don't be. I'm like, eh. Yeah, it didn't it didn't grab me. Um, and some of the characters, some of the actors that were so, the, the the actors that had some of the small roles, like in Hot Fuzz with like Bill Nye and um, and uh, 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 Pierce Brosnan. Right. Uh, no, it's Timothy Dalton. Timothy Dalton that were so good in Hot Fuzz. Like, uh, uh, Dalton was awesome in Hot Fuzz. Really missing stuff here. Uh, Bill Nye really had no role in. Just really wasted opportunity. Rosamund Pike was in this movie, but she wasn't in this movie. She just kind of floats through this movie. She's not here. Um, one get I, I get the feeling that there was way more of her in this movie, and they cut it. Um, Cause yeah, um, it, I, I wish this movie had des would have decided if this was an action movie or a comedy. You know, like. Because it ne it either needed to commit to having way more action, or being way more intelligent when it came to, like being a sci-fi, like body snatcher type parody. Um, I think there's one thing where we're seeing different movies because yeah. there were there were a lot of fight scenes in the movie. Now maybe they didn't vary it. No. But well, there were action scenes. The but movie. the action scenes you're talking about, there there were chase scenes, but all they consisted of were like. Nick Frost running down a road and being like, uh, 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 and like shoulder blocking people out of the way. That's not a fight scene. You know, or just like them picking up an arm and smashing somebody's head off the shoulders. I just. What about I, the other bar scene where, where Nick Frost did the two stools and they were. Yeah, that was weak. It was just weak. I didn't. It was. And it. it I did. I did. The, the bathroom scene was the only scene that I really remembered because it was it was really well choreographed and the, the other example where I was like there's no guy there's no human being that's this insane was the one where you, you called it the drunken boxing scene where they were in this big melee and th this was very Jackie Chan where drunken boxing where um, Simon Pegg is trying to finish his beer the whole time and the robots are trying to punch him, he keeps spilling his beer, and he's like, fuck's sake! And, like, I'm like, I know it's a comedy, but no human being would act like this. You know what I mean? I'm like, nobody would act like this in the world. Ever. 
I just went with it. I don't know. I know, but yeah, I, I know. That's I know. I get it. But like, at least have him like after the first couple tries, have him put the beer down. Be like, fuck it, and like start eventually punching people. And, and the whole fight, he's he's drinking because like okay, bathroom scene example. You know, they they start squaring off for the rumble, and the one character, the kind of cowardly character, the first thing he does when the fight breaks out is he hides in one of the stalls. Realistic. It's a comedy, but a real human being might do that. Yeah? He would, like, he wouldn't go to, like, to... That's what I'm talking about. So, that's exactly my point. You know, um, he wouldn't he wouldn't run off to the bar and just like sit on a stool and start drinking beer like making wisecracks. He wouldn't like no human. I, I, either you roll with it or you don't. And I'm just saying this wasn't. They needed to commit to that kind of comedy where it's like completely slapdash off the wall, like psych gag after psych gag after psych gag, like a Zucker Brothers comedy, or they needed to go like satirical, or they needed to go, like, balls-to-the-wall, like, bar brawl comedy, and they just didn't commit to any one of those with any kind of dedication. And I, I thought they did. Nah. I didn't, I, this was, it was... Because Simon Pegg was the punching bag through the whole movie. He's always the one getting thrown around, falling down, getting just slid across stuff, knocked around. He's, he's just... He's the character who's getting shit faced and he will do whatever it takes to get to the world's end, um, no matter what. No another, matter what. <laughs> another another example is like, okay, they're they're on a pub crawl, and I'm like, okay, they they have to pretend like they're going. Even if I'm even if I believe they're committed to going on this pub crawl, they're like, okay, we have to do this so because we can't tip off that we know. I'm like, okay, so. Why do they all have to drink? Like, maybe one of them could act like they're drunk. Like, why do they all have to get fucking hammered here? Can't they, like, at least come up with some kind of cover where they could, like, maybe, like, casually, like, get rid of their beer without having to fucking pound in the entire drink? Like, I, I just... If they're just trying to get... I, I, I don't know why... Oh, Like, oh. no, no <laughs> human beings would act this way. I know it's a comedy, yes. but, like... There's suspension of disbelief, and I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> of course no one in the middle of a town full of killer robots would be like, let's finish the pub crawl. But it's, like... <laughs> it's, it's almost like Simon Pegg looks to the camera's like, you want to see a robot movie or not? And I'm like, not really. You know, like, I'm not going to, I don't want to see a robot movie if you're just going to act like dipshits. You know, this is really, this is almost on the level of, like, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, where it's just, like, we got some money, do you, really, no, it is, like, they're like, we got some money, we're just gonna, like, get some stuntmen in a room, and get some, we're gonna get some blue ink, and spray each other with it, and slap the shit out of each other for a little while, and call it a movie. Um, this was completely witless, brainless, so-called comedy, this... There was really nothing to it. The wordplay was really not wordplay. The comedy, there was no satire to it. I just, this was not very good to me. I hate everything. Yeah, you do. Oh, shit. This was not very good. Kill him. Kill, yeah, come after me. Come at me, bro. And you know what? People are going to say that. People are going to come down. You hate everything. Why can't you have fun? When I just said I like Shaun of the Dead, I just said I like, I, I, I just said the hot fuzz is, like, the perfect screenplay for comedy. No, I hate everything. Yeah. Okay. This was not a good movie. This was... Yeah, this came out of left field because I really expected to love this movie. Um, the preview looks so good. Uh, the the giant robot, the modern art statue, looked like the Lucas the uh, LucasArts Games logo. I kept yeah, I expecting it to be like... <laughs> <laughs> That was I love that part. Um, I'm trying to think of my favorite part of the movie. The, yeah, the, the bathroom brawl scene was really well executed. But as soon as like Simon Pegg threw the rock bottom, I was like, oh Jesus. <laughs> well, that's the thing is though, like if they there was a lot of wrestling in that movie. Like, like there was a tilt a whirl backbreakers. Nick Frost was throwing like fucking Lex Luger moves. He put one robot in the he torture went, rack. He went from one kind of a reverse torture rack, and then. 
spun him around to do a, a, back a backbreaker. He threw the he threw an elbow <laughs> drop. Um, uh, one of them did like a hurric like a uh, he, the one, the robot put him in a, like a tilt a whirl head scissors. One was. I think he was trying to go for like an F five, but it got switched around. Yeah, into a, somebody hit him and he dropped it, like a hold. Uh, those were the big ones. Was the was the the reverse torture rack into the into the backbreaker? Um, there were there were two rock bottoms thrown in that scene, or I guess you could call one a urinagi, but uh, <laughs> they did they did a, a super slow mo fat man elbow drop. Which completely obliterated the chest cavity of the solar plexus. If I'm doing a Jim Ross, There's an elbow drop and a solar plexus. But yeah, I was like, I was like, they needed to really. This movie would have been awesome if they had just gone like, if every fight scene was just like, because because that was when that movie was getting awesome. I was like, these guys who are like corporate wage slaves real estate developer, um, banker, or something like that. Like, out of nowhere, fucking Nick Frost is throwing out Lex Luger torture rack. I was like, if they'd gone that whole way, and, like, he was doing, like, Matrix Kung Fu shit, like, the, the, the hoodied kid was, like, throwing punches, and he was doing, like, he was throwing, like, Kung Fu blocks. I was like, where the fuck did he, these guys are just ready for rumbling, and I was like, if they had just turned this into a straight up like Matrix style or Jackie Chan Kung Fu flick, where did Whoa. you find a squeaky? I put them, I put all the squeaky toys away except for that one. Um, if they had turned this into a straight up Jackie Chan flick, which they started off doing, I just said like this movie is fucking great. But they didn't do that. They didn't stick to that. Um, so that's honestly that's all I have to say about this movie. Was it just? It's not very good. It's it's not. I'm sorry, but go on. Closing thoughts. Previews. We 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 walked in late for the previews because I almost got us killed in the parking lot. One was the uh, the WikiLeaks movie of the Fifth Estate. We got. Sorry, we're almost done. One was the the Fifth Estate, which looks terrible. I don't know. I'll wait. It has Khan in it. <laughs> Khan. That's why you can't trust Julian Assange. Nah. God. It doesn't look very good to me. <laughs> the other one was Machete. Oh, two. Machete kills. Um. That's the, uh, although, like, that's exactly the kind of movie I just described to you at the World's Eye. We're all like, it needs to be balls to the wall, stupid action. Guess what? That's Machete kills. Um. Um. Uh, uh, Fucking um, oh who is uh, it's it's Char uh, Carlos Sheen is it? What Charlie Sheen um with Carlos Estevez. He changed his name. Uh, uh is it? I think it's Charlie Sheen changed his name to Carlos Estevez or something like that. Oh I yeah know. yeah. Um oh it's uh, uh Mel Gibson and um who else was uh, one of the bad guys in it? Um Mel Gibson looks like he's having such a good time in that movie. I know. He's like, oh my god! He's just like, he plays such a great bad guy. At one point, he's wearing like a pastel battle tuxedo or it's something like, like that. straight out of 60s Star Trek. Yeah, and like, that's the point. <laughs> I, okay, just say, Mel Gibson's fucking crazy. Yeah. And I'm not getting anything about what his personal life is, but oh, yeah. I fucking love him as an actor. And like, get the gringo... Is, oh, Get the Gringo's awesome. It's like to me, it's payback too. It is payback too. And and with this, and I'm hearing he's he's cast in Expendables three. Dude's just having a ball. So yeah, I, like I'm having fun with him. Yeah. Um. I it, now love him or hate him, Robert Rodriguez knows exactly what kind of movie this is supposed to be. So like, honestly, it's gonna be so fucking stupid. But that's the point. Yeah, but like I think it's Sofia Vergara has like machine guns on her titties, like <laughs> like, like watching Machete, the first one. It had its moments. Machete it, I, don't text. He don't tweet. Like when he was spoofing the Grindhouse movie, that was when it's best. But 
Like, especially in the third act when, when it goes completely off the that rails. It did get stupid. When you have, like, the the nurses or whatever. Yeah. That And you have, like, the parade of people yeah. coming through. That's when I was, even I was going, okay, you, you, that's, that's way too stupid. You literally had, like, a parade of every peripheral Robert Rodriguez character, like, marching out of an ambulance. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. The, even and so... While it looks just crazy, I just don't know if it's if yeah. he he doesn't. At times he has it, and other times it's he, just stupid. It's, I don't know how to quantify it or qualify it any yeah. better than that. Sometimes it's brilliantly stupid, and other times it's just moronic. Yeah, you're right, and, and actually, you're right. It it depends on whether or not he's able to show restraint, and honestly, from his track record, he has not. So, and that's the problem is, you remember that one scene where he harpoons the guy and he flies into the helicopter? And I'm like, ah, <laughs> that is not a good sign, honestly, for his ability to show restraint. Um, yeah, the third, the third act from Machete, the third act from Machete is, you, you, it's honestly facepalm worthy because you're like, oh my god. You're like, you're like it, it's honestly kind of embarrassing. You're like, you're like. Oh my god, because like, you, you almost don't want somebody to walk in and watch you watching it. Because especially the stuff from the trailer, the, the fake trailer that he yeah. originally did. That's stuff to where you go, yeah, that's something you see from just a crazy, just exploitation movie. Yeah. Kind of, it, you know, it's obviously ramped up, but still, it's like, that, that's kind of the, the, the beats you go through. Yeah. But yeah, it, it goes completely insane and, yeah, and, and this one does look better from an execution point of view from the original machete I, I honestly I, I wasn't happy when I heard they were making machete because I was like that just sounds like a better idea as a trailer than it would as an actual movie and no, then I, really it now that you bring Saints Row 4 into it it kind of kind of looks like it has that kind of same insane it, the, the insanity that Saints Row 4 does because it opens well, up well, Charlie Sheen is the president. Well, I, I have a lot to say about Saints Row 4. I might actually do a video once I play a little more of it. Because I, I am going to do... I, oh shit, I forgot to get footage of the first part. Anyway, um, Saints Row 3. Because I, I felt Saints Row 3 had a good balance. I don't believe Saints Row 4 does. But yeah, it, it actually does kind of have that... That it knows how... It recognizes how over the top it is, but still manages to be funny. You know what I mean? Um... We'll see. That one is I'm way more optimistic about, but uh, yeah, it could easily be like. You, you, you but that's the kind of movie where I can see Mel Gibson coming on, yeah. and he's just Mel motherfucking Gibson. Um, but that one has that one has all the capacity to be a train wreck. Difference being, the last one had, the last one had Lindsay Lohan, and you're like, oh my god, this is gonna be a train wreck. In a bad way. And guess what? It was. In a very bad way. Because she sucked. And the only reason you watched it for the train wreck was on the off chance you were going to see her titties. If you still cared about seeing her titties. And at that point, she was such a drugged, coked out wreck, you didn't even want to see her titties. And you didn't. You know? So, like, who cares? So, like, now Mel Gibson, you might actually get to see his titties. But... Actually, you might. I hear he's got some good things. He's got some good things. I've seen him in... Uh, I think you might actually see him in Get the Gringo. I can't remember. Anyway. Um, Charlie Sheen, you definitely will see his titties. Because you see him in bed with like six women. So, yeah, you're going to see Charlie Sheen's titties. No, or Carlos Estevez, I'm sorry. You're going to see You're gonna see Carlos's titties. Um, you, you definitely see uh, uh, Danny Trejo's titties. By the way, you know how old that guy is? He's pretty old. He's old. Uh, he Wasn't he in a movie called, like... like Old dirty bastard or something like that. No, badass. <laughs> like old but badass. He's just based on him, an old bastard. Yeah, like he's fucking old, and he was fucking ugly when I saw Anaconda. That was like fifteen years ago, <laughs> if not longer. Man, I'm old. No, um, but yeah, that one is. <coughs> I think we only saw two. Is that the, <coughs> Wiki, the WikiLeaks? Yeah, movie? That, that was it. But yeah, um. So once again, we radically disagree on things, and I'm going to fight you in the street. He'll win. Um, so yeah, um, I liked it. I didn't 
I, I didn't like it as much as Shaun of the Dead and, and no. Hot Fuzz. No. Uh, but still, I, the, part of it is I think it because it, it actually does diverge a lot in in terms of tone Give and me. in uh, in the humor style of it. So it's it's actually a different kind of movie, would, but it's. Would you at least agree in terms of like the trilogy, so to speak? It's the weakest of the three. Yeah, it's okay. So. Bring it here. But I, I still found it. I still found it very. It was, okay. It was a it was a very good time in the theater. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much all I got. I also felt that, um, in terms of like music, actually, there was a lot of identity in the music for the previous two movies. I did. I felt this didn't really have much of a musical identity. You know what I mean? The like Queen in uh, 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 Shaun of the Dead. There was a lot of identity there, um, the, like white lines and stuff. You know, uh, so yeah, I, th this one was just this, this was missing so much. It just this was not the same kind of comedy. Anyway, uh, I just felt like I had to get the last word in. No, um, go on, go on. Uh, I was like, no, fuck you. You're like, I have to get this up on a negative note. Fuck you, Miles. No. Uh, Anything else you want to say sucks? We got our movies over there. Um, uh, oh, we yeah, have movies. <laughs> what else sucks? Um, I, uh, um, what, what is that? The Sapphires. Have you seen that yet? Nope, not yet. No, you're going to watch that later? But it sucks. What, uh, oh, it sucks? <laughs> you haven't seen it, but it sucks? That's my line. Uh, I haven't seen it, but it sucks. Uh, Deadly Prey. Deadly awesome. Prey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> Deadly Prey. <laughs> Oh shit! Me and April saw this one fucking stupid. We just got a bunch of trash over here. Like, well, th those the, are my VHS. Yeah, we're transferring that. over, but we've got a lot of B movies being transferred over. Well, yeah, and a lot of them are my uh, board games that I'm kind of transferring to my computer. <sighs> anyway, Oreo wants to play tennis ball, so I will deny her no longer. So hopefully, at least our reviews have enlightened you, depending on which of us you identify with. Because you know me, I hate everything. Except for the stuff that I like. But obviously nobody listens to me! Anyway, you guys have a good night. Miles, say goodbye. Goodbye.